up book lovers, it is G-Swizz here and I am here today to share the series that are on my TBR for the year with you. I love filming this video every year because I love compiling lists of books that I want to read and setting goals. I mean, what's new? If you've been following me for a while, you'd already know this. I have definitely been looking forward to this video because there are so many great series that I am super hyped up about. However, I've noticed that it looks a little bit different from other years because there's actually a big focus on independently published book series or at least a book series that started off as independently published book series and have a transitioned into having like traditional published rights. I have a good mix of trad published and indie published books on here. I am stepping out of my shell. I'm wanting to dive more into fantasy romance or maybe even dark romance. I remember thinking to myself last year as I was looking at my very small fantasy romance TBR left that I needed to get more and I ended up accumulating a bunch more since that evaluation. I am also planning to do a manga TBR on my channel which will also consist of series. So every series that I will mention today mostly has to do with like full-length novels that aren't of the graphic novel or manga variety but I will be doing a video on that so stay tuned for that so I guess without further ado let's get straight into the series TBR and let me share with you guys what series I'm really excited to get to. The first book series that I really want to get to in 2023 is The Winner's Trilogy by Marie Rukowski. This is more of a second chance read for me. Five or six years ago I read this series and I really don't remember what I didn't like about it but I ended up rating it like one or two stars on Goodreads and then I ended up talking about it on my channel saying that I did not like it and I actually don't remember why I did not like it. Maybe I could revisit those videos of me talking about it but honestly I didn't really give much detail back then. I look back at the reviews and I'm like really? Where is it? What did I not like about it? Was it just boring to me at the time? Was I just not in the mood to read it? Honestly, I think a big reason why I didn't enjoy it as much was because every single time I went into a new fantasy series, I was always looking for the chosen one trope, and I was also kind of looking for a character that was at the forefront of things, and magic. But this series doesn't have that. This series has a protagonist who is technically fighting from the sidelines in a more strategic way, and this series more has to do with politics in this high fantasy world. I don't remember whether the series has magic or not, but what I do know is that it's like a kind of high fantasy world where the protagonist isn't necessarily like the chosen one. That was what I was looking for in fantasy back in the day. I mean, I was very narrow-minded when I was getting into fantasy at first. Now, I'd have to say I'm a much more mature reader and I am very much intrigued by politics, especially when it comes to fiction and fantasy. This book series might just do it for me now. I I am very much looking forward to giving this book series a second chance because I really don't remember anything about Kestrel and Aaron. All I know is that I got really annoyed with Aaron, but I think it was because he was an angry character. But like he had every reason to be angry because of his circumstances in this book. Like he's of a lower class and Kestrel I think is of a ruling class or something. I really don't know. I have to revisit the series to find out. I think I just found Aaron annoying and the story to just be bland at first and that's why I was turned off. But it wasn't for me. Maybe the series is for me now. And on the lighter end of things, I really want to get to the Brown Sisters trilogy this year. This year, I also want to get to a lot more romantic companion series. But this one, I definitely want to focus on because this one, I feel like I've missed out on for a very long time. I only just received the books at the end of 2022, around my birthday period. So it was very sweet for Camillo and Allison to give me these books for my birthday. I just remember everyone in their mother was raving about the series back in 2020. 2020 and I was curious about it at the time but also at the time I wasn't reading romantic contemporary like at all and I've even heard from friends who don't actually usually delve into romantic contemporary that this is one of their favorite romantic contemporaries and that is saying a lot because I have finally gotten into romantic contemporary so like what is stopping me now I have to give these a go I aim to read these this year and I sincerely hope fingers crossed this will be a new favorite romance series of mine and the next book series I put on my 2020 
23 series TBR is actually a book series I don't own physical copies of and I will not own physical copies of until there is a re-jacketing of the covers because personally I really do not like the paperback covers at the moment. However, it takes place in the universe of one of my favorite book series of all time, the Bargainer Trilogy. I am talking about the Unearthly series by Laura Falassa. This is a five book series. I own all the audiobooks to the series and I refuse to buy the physical copies until they change the covers because I just, I don't know why, they're just a little bit unsettling. I mean, look, like the audiobook covers aren't amazing either, but I kind of like the consistency of them. And yeah, these ones look like general Kindle Unlimited paranormal romance covers anyway. Anyway, for now, I will listen to these on audiobook. I read the Bargainer trilogy twice in 2022. I love revisiting this world and I do want to revisit this world even if we are following the characters, I believe, at the Academy that is in a very brief part of the Bargainer series. But also there's another series that Laura Falassa will be starting in 2023, starting off with the book Bewitched. It takes place in the same world. I know that I don't have to read the Unearthly series in order to proceed. However, I do want to experience the world of the Bargainer and the Unearthly series in all of its fullness before going into Bewitched. So that is my aim for the year. I would love to get into the series, but additionally, I want to read the backlist of one of my favorite authors of all time. However, speaking of Laura Falassa's backlist, I also want to read the Fallen World trilogy by Laura Falassa. I don't think that this has like any spin-off at all. I think that this is a standalone trilogy that takes place in its own contained world that Laura Falassa had written. And I hear good things about this series. A lot of people are saying that this series is another top tier one from her. And you know what? I trust that. I am so looking forward to trying this out. I was intrigued by these covers from the get-go. So I initially really wanted to read it last year. I just personally never had the chance to read it. I have absolute faith in Laura Falassa to deliver because she has in the Four Horsemen series and she has in the Bargainer trilogy so far for me. I don't know whether this one will be the next one I read from her, but what I do know is that both the Unearthly series and the Fallen World trilogy, those two are full series I want to read by Laura Falassa. And personally, I have no clue as to whether or not I want to read this before or after Bewitched comes out. But what I do know is that it might actually be a good book hangover relief after Bewitched comes out because I will be reading a bunch of books within the Bargainer Unearthly Bewitched world. So this might help with that. And speaking of book hangovers that I would sincerely like to avoid, but I would also really like to enjoy these book series. I would also like to bring up the Plated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy on this TBR. I don't think I'm going to reread Guild at all, to be honest. So I will be taking that one out of the equation. However, I plan to read Glint, Gleam, Glow, and Gold, which are books two to five in the series. I purposefully waited till 2023 so that all the books could be out before I read all of them because I personally don't know if my heart can handle a book hangover after a cliffhanger. I've suffered enough with the Blood and Ash and Flesh and Fire series. I've suffered enough with the Crave series. I don't know if I can suffer with this series. So that is why I've been waiting until Gold finally drops. I do want to read this series from book two onward because book one was really hard to stomach and book one, in my personal opinion, should have been like book 0.5 because it's more of a prequel that doesn't really have a plot. It just essentially lets us know Oren's backstory, but the story apparently starts from Glint. So I cannot wait to continue on with the series. I was just about to say start because honestly, this feels like the start after what we went through in Guild. I might just cry my little heart out this year over the series. And next I'm gonna mention a series that is on my TBR that I have also waited until the final book would come out because I wanted to binge read it all within one year. However, unlike the Plated Prisoner series, this series I know nothing about. I literally just collected this series because of its book covers. And that, my friends, is the Bluebird Secret series by Sarah K. L. Wilson. I just loved these covers. And so I really hope I at least like the first book enough to continue on with the series. I mean, they weren't expensive. They have pretty covers. I have a friend who loves this series. They've just essentially said that it's a good fantasy romance series and they get really excited every single time a new book drops in it. So I've just collected the first three books and the fourth and the final book either comes out at the end of 2022 or the beginning of 2023. I have these books. They're taking up space. I really need to read them. That's all. However, the next series that I have on my series TBR for 2023 is a series where I know what to expect because it is a dark fairy tale reimagining series. And how do I know that? Because the title of the series is literally Deliciously Dark Fairy Tales. This is 
is a series by KF Breen. These are all companion novels and I am so looking forward to diving into this series. I'm pretty sure all of them will take place in the same world and I don't know whether they have like intertwining characters or not. But what I do know is that I absolutely love fairy tale reimaginings. I also very much love fantasy romance and I have wanted to dive into more companion series over the years. So hopefully this series will be for me. I'm pretty sure Ruin of Roses is a Beauty and the Beast reimagining. That's my thing. I am a Beauty and the Beast gal. I haven't heard a bad thing about it at all yet so far. It just really seems to be my thing. I have been getting into Tessandra Odette's fairy tale reimaginings. By the looks of it, this series gives me similar vibes, but it gives me somewhat darker vibes. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to letting you guys know how I go with it. I have not even read anything by KF Breen yet, so that really does need to change because I've heard great things about all of her series. And for some reason, this next series that I bring up gives me similar vibes. I finally want to get to the Maze of Shadows series by Catherine and Kingsley. Now, these books have amazing illustrations by Grace Zoo Art. I'm like obsessed with them. Can't hold them up all together, but I mean, I really love these illustrations. So the reason why they give me similar vibes is not because they're like fairy tale reimaginings, but for some reason, they kind of give me Beauty and the Beast vibes. And I mean, I'm always looking for those vibes. It was literally my favorite fairy tale growing up. I know I have issues. I literally talked to Camillo about how many issues I have based on the Beauty of the Beast being my favorite fairy tale of all time. I mean, I can't help it. And for some reason, this series gives me Beauty and the Beast vibes, but it involves an unseely prince trying to look for his queen. There is a hate to love dynamic in here. It's slow burn. I've personally heard amazing things about the romantic tension in this series. I'm excited for it. I am nervous about it as well because sometimes a slow burn can be torturesome. However, I am here for the ride because once again, it gives me like the fairy tale vibes. It kind of gives me some Akatar vibes as well because hot fae dudes. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to a good time, but also a very compelling story and romance overall. I have wanted to read this one for quite some time. And so I'm challenging myself to read it in 2023, but who knows? It might not be a challenge. It might just be very intriguing to the point that I'm consumed by it. And once again, the bad book hangover will strike again. The next book series I would like to add to this TBR seems to be somewhat of a palette cleanse as opposed to the dark fantasy romances I have been bringing up. This is also a young adult series, but I've wanted to read it for quite some time and I figured that 2023 must be the year that I finally get to it. And that, my friends, is the Wings of Ebony duology by J.L. I have Wings of Ebony and Ashes of Gold. I at least want to start this series this year. All I know is that this is an urban fantasy that follows demigods, so it very much gives me Percy Jackson vibes. I also want to read the Demigods of San Francisco as well as an honorable mention. However, that is new adult. This is young adult. I am very much getting more into new adult fantasy these days, but every once in a while, I do like to break it up with a young adult series. And I reckon that Wings of Ebony would be the perfect breakup from all the heavy new adult books that I've put on my shelves. And also, I know that I've showed this off before, but I'll show it off again. I have a signed first edition, which is really cool. And on top of all that, look at the covers. These are absolutely stunning covers. I love them. <laughs> now I need to read them. <laughs> like soon. And the next book series that I would like to read in 2023 is a book series that I recently got almost every single one of the books for for my birthday gift, which was exciting thanks to my amazing husband. I just need to get one more of the books before I believe I have the complete series unless the author decides that they want to extend the series, then it's not going to be completed and I waited a lot of time for nothing. <laughs> I have wanted to read the Air Comes to Rise series by Chloe C. Peña Randa for a very long time, but I have been waiting for all five books to come out. But who knows, like if there's a sixth book, then I'll have to wait more, or if it just gets extended further on, then I don't know. Like maybe I should just buckle in and start at some point. I have the first four books in the series. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie. It was more like I loved the cover, I put it on my wish list, and then I waited until Camilla purchased it for my birthday. I personally know nothing about the series except that it is a high fantasy new adult that has amazing characters that everyone keeps on raving about and that Alice Maria Power illustrated all these beautiful covers. They are absolutely stunning. I can't even deal with how beautiful her illustrations are. I'm honestly so blown away. But that's not enough. I really need to read the series. I think these covers give the series Throne of Glass vibes in my opinion. And you know what? I love a good new adult fantasy, whether it be dark or whether it be on the lighter 
lighter side. So I wonder where this series is going to land on the spectrum. I just love fantasy romance in general, and I really hope that I'll love this one. The second last book series that I have on my 2023 series TBR is The Raven and the Dove Quartet by Caitlin Davis. I have been collecting these books ever since I noticed that The Raven and the Dove was in the Amazon store. I saw the hardback, I immediately needed it, and as these books came out, I just kept on collecting them. I finally have them all in my possession, but I really need to finally read them. For some reason, these books kind of give me fairy tale vibes. In fact, they kind of remind me of Tessandra Odette's work. So I'm hoping I get those vibes, but if I don't, if they end up being something darker, then you know what? I'm still here for it as well. I am pretty much trying to experiment with the spectrum of fantasy romance here, whether it be lighter fantasy or whether it be darker fantasy. These covers are definitely giving me the lighter side of the fantasy spectrum. And to top it all off, the covers are absolutely stunning. I heard about Caitlin Davis before this series came out. I heard about her with her Ignite series. I think she's also done a fairy tale reimagining series as well. But for some reason, this was the first series I was intrigued to pick up from her. And so I'm wondering if this series will be a gateway for me to read her other books. And last, but certainly not least, I have mentioned this on a few TBRs before, and I officially want to complete this series in 2023. Guys, I'm referring to the Savage Lands series by Stacey Marie Brown. I've wanted to read this series for probably over a year now. I just didn't collect the hardbacks until I got my tax money back last year, and I was really happy to have finally obtained a set. I was also very much waiting for book six to come out because I've heard that this series is very emotionally taxing. It's very draining. It's one of those romances that are on and off at times, and it just pulls at your heartstrings, it breaks your heart, it tears it into shreds. That is what I've heard about the Savage Land series. I'm intimidated. I'm definitely afraid of the series. However, I think I was even more intimidated by it because all the books weren't out when I first heard about it. I think only book two or three was out when I first heard about Savage Lands, but what I do know is that when Savage Lands came out, everyone and their mother was talking about it and was recommending it to absolutely everyone. So I knew that I needed to read it. I am wondering whether 2023 is going to be my year. And if it is, I really hope that Savage Lands is a new favorite of mine because I waited. I waited for all these books to come out. The wait is over. They're finally here. I have to subject myself to torture and try them out. So I guess that's going to be it for this video today, book lovers. If you happen to stay till the end of the video, leave me the purple heart emoji because I love purple. And if you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers. And also, I have social medias. I'm at Books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also at Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash gswizzle. And finally, I'm at TikTok. I'm at gswizzle on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Peace. I feel like flipped it in a double. Mm -hmm. How did I wear half when I flipped it in a double?